Guess what? Guess who's sitting here? Is this the men's room? <laughs> no. I think it you... looks like the men... Is there a switch here? I think you made the wrong turn. <laughs> this is on? Yeah, you're on. Can you hear yourself there? Yeah, it sounds like uh, we're in 40-minute delay. Oh. You must have heard about the oh, last you know time what? I was here. Uh, I think you got a little echo there. How's I got that? echo. Does that sound better? I have no echo. What happened to my echo? I took it off. It's probably easier without the echo. Oh, I like <laughs> the echo. I put oh. it in here. Oh, yeah. Now, that reverb that we have on this station... The you sure this is not the men's room? It looks just like it. it smells like well, it. Looks. What's the wet place in the corner for? <laughs> wow. But you, you are the guy who put that reverb on this station. Yes, it was an EMT unit is what it was called. And it was the uh, shape of a book about uh, almost six feet long and about three and a half, four feet high and about nine, ten inches thick. Wow. And uh, it is... Uh, it was just a sheet of, of uh, what do you call it? Uh, like uh, metal? Steel, aluminum? something like that. Yeah. Yeah, steel. So Because that... I never took one apart. But the one at ABC eventually fell yeah. apart. And so I sold them one I had at home for exactly the same I paid for it. And then I found out later the price on them had gone up to 20 grand. <laughs> so, so they got a big present for me. Oh, well, we'll look for that on eBay sometime. So, uh, Mark, are you uh, going to be here for a little while, or are you just going to the men's room? No. <laughs> Actually, we have some uh, official business we have to do first. Well, official business? No, we have something we have to do here. Just, we, just to set things straight. Well, this being a, this must be an official men's room, then, if you're no. official business. He has some obsession with the men's room, I noticed. <laughs> well, it looked comfortable to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, 25 years ago, you signed off this station. Oh, God. No, I didn't. I signed off music radio. Yes, but it was 25 years ago. It was you and Ron Lundy. You co-hosted the final program. Yeah, 9 to noon with Ron, and we both looked at each other and wondered why there was a tear in each of our eyes. But I want you to hear what you said at the end. So let's play this. Had a good time today. I love you. Thank you so much for everything. I love you, too, Ron. My best friend in the whole world. It's, uh... It's been a lot of uh, a lot of records over the turntables to make a very bad uh, <laughs> simile. Uh, there is one thing that I want to say that will be probably the last time that I'm not afraid it will be the last time I will ever be able to say this on WABC. And the last thing I'm going to say is this is WABC New York. I can't say that anymore, can I? Well, guess what? New York. No, there's a, they, they implanted a chip in my brain. I, I can't do that. It's 25 years later. I want you to say it again, then I'm going to cue the engineer for cut six. What? Say the, the, you, you can now say it again. This, this is just the break. You, this is WABC in New York. This is WABC New York. Here we go. Standing room. <laughs> WABC. Standing room. Go, go, go. Some places in this room you don't want to step, that's for sure. I hate to carry this. Uh, and the word I missed doing that close was metaphor. It wasn't simile. Oh. Uh, but then the men's room was a metaphor for every station I've ever worked at, what? including one that actually was formerly the men's room. And they, they left the little place where you stand up. Yeah. That's what you call a stall? The stall. And that's what we're doing, stalling. See? Go, 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 go. Now, right. see, this is phenomenal. That was your opening. It just, as soon as it started to play, it was uh, uh, half genius, half Pavlovian. You went right into, like, an opening no, monologue. Of course I did. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's why I get paid. Well, nowhere near the money guys are going to make it a day, but I, <laughs> I was all right. Well, Dan Engel will be with us tonight. We'll give you a chance to uh, get comfortable, get settled there. We'll take some calls. Uh, if you want to talk to Dan Ingram, call us right now. We'll Is this take... a fresh bottle of water? Yeah, or... that's, that's yours. Well, there's mustache hairs. So... Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, well, those are Frank Kingston Smith mustache hairs from <laughs> many years ago. But uh, Dan Ingram will be with us co-hosting tonight. The music sounds best on WABC. You're right with music in the WABC Music Time, 632. Dan Ingram with us tonight to co-host. 632 and 9 seconds. Oh, see that? I see how precise he is. Well, I'm a fan of the neck. Yeah. Well, you know, I have heard so many rumors about me and engineers. And they're all true about the guy who succeeded Bruce Morrow in the evening. 
who was running a sports show out of Washington, D.C. Oh, last uh, I heard. George Michael. George hey, he retired Michael. here. He retired from that. Did he retire? Yeah. He looked like it. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he retired before he got on TV. But uh, anyway, George used to throw chairs at engineers. He literally did once. Yeah. He, he, and uh, the guy happened to be a pretty strong guy and, uh, as they say, cold something. Really? Him, right there in the studio. Huh. So the rest of the show was segue music. Well, we have a lot of clips we're going to play for you tonight. A very oh. We take some calls, so let's uh, just take some calls. We have people that want to say hello to you. People are, who listen to me speak English, that's good. Well, some of your fans are calling up. Uh, here's, uh, let's take the first call. What, oh, what is your name, sir? Hello? He has... Hello? Yes. How are you? How am I? How I... are you, Mark? You son of a gun, you. And say hello to Dan Ingram. Who? Dan Ingram. Dan Ingram? I think I hear a Lundy in my I ear. I grew phone. up listening to that devil boy. You know, the kind of a person who would live in a, in a town called Leopold, Mississippi. <laughs> it's Ron Lundy. I know it is. You can't, you can't not spot that voice. That was when I was working at WIL in St. Louis. Someone brought in a tape of this guy in New Orleans. And uh, I think it was New Orleans, wasn't it? You were on before? Baton Rouge. Close. Baton Rouge. I know it was somewhere nearby. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you something. There was nothing in that voice that he was doing that indicated Ron Lundy. How did you pick that up so fast? That's his voice. I mean, I can tell him. I, I had, I, had uh, I think, what was it, 21 years I was at ABC, something like that. Oh, I, was... I don't know. It seemed like I'm still there. Yeah, it sounds like you still are. <laughs> hey, you want to know? Things are still the same at WABC. Because I was just handed an envelope, and this is my voucher for the car to get me here. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's I love it. Typical corporate thinking. I and, love it. And how is that wonderful guy you got who's running the station? Who I mean, the guy who's running the station, you know him. He's Mark Simone. Oh, but, well, of uh, course. Uh, I mean, I've the, talked to Mark a couple of few times, you know. Oh, that's all right. I wouldn't uh, say it too loud. <laughs> well, I don't. Try, I don't want too many to hear me, and I, I know that signal doesn't go that far, so you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, uh, Ron Lundy, you told me that a couple of times Dan was late, and you had to keep uh, the sh keep going for a few minutes. Oh, I did. I I used to do things like snower. But then I'd get my old copies of The Shadow, you know, and yeah. I'd be both the people on it. I'd be Margot and who, Dan? Uh, Lamont Cranston. <laughs> yes. He, he was the shadow, that's right. That was... Oh, we had, Mark, we had a great time. We sure we did, did. Especially when you look back on it now. And, and Dan and me, we've, we've been together for going on 50 years now. I don't want to hear that. And I look in a mirror and I say, <laughs> believe you, mirror. It's the truth, <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, it is. You know, I don't know about you, but... Uh, uh, I admit to 72, which is not well, exactly Well, I'm not going to admit to that. No, of course not. My goodness. You're, no, I, you're, six months, you. you're six months older than me. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, listen, I've, I've got I've to tell you one Dan Ingram. One Dan Ingram story. Oh, God. Okay, now this goes back when Dan was a disc jockey in the mornings, the best I ever heard in the morning <laughs> in, 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 in the South. Anyway, he was in Dallas. And it was, uh, KBOX was the radio station. Yeah. K-Box. John Box was our managing director. Absolutely. They named the station after him. Big oh, Conrad yeah. Hilton kind of a guy. Uh, actually, yeah. uh, do you have Cut 12 in the back there? He's got Cut 12? Yeah, now wait a minute. Like, wait one a minute. of those people injures himself? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Well, well, take a listen to this. Here's Cut 12. This is Radio KBOX. Uh -huh. This is Radio KBOX. Uh -huh. Big 
Dan Ingram, your morning mayor of Big D. Awful nice to have you with me on the right side of radio. K-Box, 1480. <laughs> That's you, Sounds but... about 12, then. <laughs> Dang, you sound like a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> I was a gnome. I didn't tell you about oh, that. You didn't. You never told me Strange that. Strange woman kissed me, and I oh. turned into a horse. <laughs> Let me tell you this story. And then she rode me like that. It was wonderful. <laughs> oh, I've, got to, I've just got to t- tell you this story. First time I ever met Dan, I, w- I was working in Baton Rouge, uh-huh. and he was the uh, the big guy in Dallas. And I was over and trying to get a job. I thought I was going to work in Dallas. No, we and wanted you for St. Louis. I know, but I didn't know that then. Yeah. So anyway, we're hanging out there at the radio station, and Dan's there, and all the guys are around. And uh, the national program director was a man named Bob Whitney. My greatest programmer I've ever known, period. He was good. I learned everything from him. He was good. Which is why I'm in such terrible shape now. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, me shot too. Me, he taught me about triple shots. Dan, <laughs> Dan had uh, one of those, the greatest Chevy. You know, the two things that made Detroit famous was Motown Records and yeah. a 57 Chevy convertible. I had a 57 Chevy convertible. Black which was convertible, col- and that was just the but, not neatest thing you've ever seen in your life. It was, which, colored, it was colored black and black and black. <laughs> yes, but it had some chrome on it. <laughs> oh, it had a little chrome, yeah. Teensy, yeah. teensy bit. A little tiny strip. Anyway, anyway we're, we're driving around Dallas. Oh, he did? Cars full, top down, uh-huh. driving around. Come up to a red light, stop. Dan stands up in the car. Now, this is about 11 o'clock at night, and the street's just full of people. And two and bottles every, ago. And yeah. everybody's got K-Box on the radio yeah. around in the cars, and that's the way it was. Dan stands up in the car and says, and takes his fist and looks up at the sky and says, Dallas, I'll lick you one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just sat down in the back of the car, and I didn't get up anymore that night. No, I think. You were having fun in the back seat there. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> well, I didn't realize you guys knew each other. I thought you met in St. Louis a few years later. No, what happened was uh, I played this tape. I said, it's a guy I met in Dallas, and uh, I want you to listen to him. And John Box, who was the managing director of all three Balaban stations, of which W-I-L, W-R-I-T was the other one, and K-Box in Dallas. I said, I listened to him in Dallas, and he's one of the best voices I've ever heard on the air. Listen to this guy's energy. And John Box listened to him and said, that's Elvis Presley. <laughs> and that's what he said, word for word. And Bob Whitney, the best programmer in the whole world, was standing there. He said, I want to put him on in the evening. He said, you bet your thing. And uh, that's when you that's when you're really hired. I was there. Wow. That was a good time. That, that was a good time. Hey, uh, I didn't really know what was going on, though, for the next five years until well, I got to New York. Well, yeah. Rotten Lundy, can you hang on one second? Can you sure. stay with us? Want, right, me, yeah. want me to tell a story about New York? In a second. In a second, I will. But we got, <laughs> we got to take a break first, and then we'll get right back. Dan Ingram, our co-host, Ron Lundy with us, and a whole lot more coming up on WABC. Saturday Night Oldie. What an awesome idea. From 77 WABC. Thank you for calling Credit Card Relief of America. This is Zach. Can I help you? I hope so. My name's Marvin, and I just don't put up my credit card statements, and you wouldn't believe the interest rates these guys are charging me. I'm telling you, they're way over 20%. I just can't afford it. Marvin, I hear this every day. We can help you. That'd be great. Can you tell me how? Well, there are three immediate ways we can help you. First, we'll contact your credit card companies and have them stop bothering you. Well, I like that. Next, we'll work with your credit card companies to get you much lower interest rates than you're paying now and stop the late and over limit fees well that's even better and we'll give you one new lower monthly payment that you can afford and if you follow our advice you'll be debt free in three to five years call 866-484-9616 that's 866-484-9616 if you have high credit card debt and you want to learn how credit card consolidation can work for you make this free call now call 866-484-9616 that's 866-484-9616 9616. When you drive a Lexus, how does the world perceive you? As successful? Undoubtedly. As discerning? Certainly. But if it's true that you are what you drive, then surely the owner of a Lexus certified pre-owned vehicle is perceived as both flexible and understanding. After all, 
There is no program today as flexible and understanding as our three-year, 100,000-mile warranty. You see, for the first time, you can extend it up to six years from your date of purchase or 125,000 total vehicle miles or anything in between, depending on your needs. And since it's Lexus backed, you receive even better protection than most new car buyers. Not that you may need it. Since we hand select each vehicle and put it through an exhaustive inspection process, standards like these place every Lexus certified pre-owned vehicle in a class of its own and mean that it is perceived as one of the best automobiles in the world. For details on our extended protection, see your New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Lexus dealer or visit LexusCPO.com. And now, another conversation with a man who hasn't switched to GEICO. I'm afraid the problem is GEICO.com. What do you mean? It makes shopping for car insurance too easy. Way too easy. Well, we just thought folks should be able to get a rate quote without jumping through a lot of hoops. Really? What's next? Using GEICO.com to pay my bill, report a claim, add a driver? Well, now that you mention it. Oh, no. If you don't mind car insurance made easy, visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Another good thing about GEICO is they've got, like, real live people working there 24-7. So, like, say you need to report a claim, right? A real person will be there to help you. Then you can use GEICO.com to view photos of the damage, track your claim, print an estimate. You want an English muffin? They literally hand you a toasted muffin with butter and jam. Whoa. That's a, that's a complete dramatization, of course, but you get my point. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We used to be rocking. Now we're talking. Weekday mornings, 5 to 10 a.m. with Curtis and Kuby on 77 WABC. It's Saturday Night Oldies. Uh, actually, we should be playing some music, but this is more important. Dan Ingram, our co-host tonight, and on the line, Ron Lundy. Hello. Hello, love. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, buddy. How you doing? I'm fine. How's Shirley? All is oh, well? Oh, she's fine. She's just fine. And she puts up with you, right? Yeah, she puts <laughs> up with me. She's got to be the best. Well, no. Her she and is, Maureen. She is they a want a close, you know, one. Maureen is sitting right here. She's laughing at me like oh, I'm, bless I'm her as heart. stupid as she thinks I am. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, your wife, didn't? she uh, back then didn't really listen to WABC. She told me once. Well, the truth is, uh, WABC... ABC in the depths of its ego once <laughs> hired the Pulse Incorporated to do a survey in New York to see if there was anybody who had never listened to WABC. We had a 95% penetration, they found out, but there were 5% of the people in New York yeah. never had listened to it. <laughs> My wife, thank God, I found out before I married her that she was one of that 5%. And she said to me, she said, I knew he was a big radio guy, but I never actually listen she doesn't realize what this means the two of you speaking to each other i had to explain to her about ratings and things like that and she said well what does number one mean <laughs> i said in my case it means i'm number one in new york i'm number three in philadelphia i'm number 13 in pittsburgh and all this was true and there was a guy at the pulse who came in and said you know, ABC won't pay for the ratings that yeah. show up in other markets because they think it was ill you know, yeah. Just the, the company trying to compete with them. And besides, they had non-compete agreements. But anyway, uh, I asked him, I said, could you take the miscellaneous column, which is where all those people listen to WABC wound up, I said, and you know, just total it up and tell me how high I am. He oh, said, my. Well, you he said you look a little high right now. I said, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, no. I'm loving it. I said, no, I don't do that. <laughs> but any, and I didn't. Uh, anyway, uh, he came back to me the next day and said, I've been doing math for about eight solid hours, and I have to tell you something that you can say honestly, that you have the highest ratings in North American continent. You at one point had something like 25 million people listening oh, to you. Oh, that's just in New York. Yeah, I mean, it's a record that will never be broken, but even the... Well, I still hold the record, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are network shows, Rush Limbaugh... Ron does, too. He was so solid, number one, you couldn't believe it. And the reason why he was so great is because in, in rock stations, the revenue starts to fall off as soon as you get off the morning show. And then it, you know, stabilizes somewhere around midday and then maybe goes up with the kids in the yeah. evening for a while. But... Uh, now, we, we had a different pattern. We had, we had the number two morning show, which is Herb Oscar Anderson. Number one was John Gambling, who was still there. He'd been there 115 years. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of nice because uh, I knew him 
My father had played in the band when John Gambling had a band on his orchestra in WOR. So we got, a, we got to know each but other. But for those of us, those kids who were listening, were two moments. You almost scheduled your life around. One was the uh, Ron Lundy would say goodbye, and then <laughs> after the news, your opening theme would play. But right. we knew Ron never really had said goodbye, because he'd no. be laughing behind you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'd come into the studio and start laughing. He'd look at me and, <laughs> you're still here? <laughs> <laughs> and then there'd be a wicked exchange between the two of you before the first record. Well, we always did that. Oh, somebody asked Dad one time, I remember somebody asked me, says, is it hard to break up Ron? He says, uh, yeah, if you don't know any card tricks. <laughs> <laughs> so he breaks up in card tricks. You know, it's, <laughs> is that prepared material or someone no, told you not, that really? No, I, 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 I should have prepared for this. Yes. I, just, uh, well, I didn't know Mark you and never, all of you were going to be You there. never prepared in your life for anything. <laughs> yeah, you know well, that. I don't know. You, well, said, I don't know. you, Listen, said you, were, you know, Dan, well, let me do something. I hope it's okay. Want, we are uh, in 45-minute delay here since I was well, here once okay. before. Well, listen. Yeah. Naughty. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Is that a bird or not? I want to. No, you know who I want to say hello to? Uh, Jana. I, Jana? Yep. Who's Jana? Jana's my daughter. Oh. How's Jana? She's fine. And, uh, and, uh, my, my granddaughter, Erin. You got a granddaughter? I do. Well, I got and, two. I know. Well, mine's 15 years old. My great granddaughters are, I think, four and. Uh, or something like Great that. Great granddad. And my grandson, listen, he, he's 20. His name is Mark Haggerty. And then, of course, the champion of that whole family is Mike Haggerty. Oh. And he's just the best guy in the world. So you married up. Yeah, I did. <laughs> 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 but I was going to say hello to them and, and to Harry Harrison, our good friend uh, Harry over in New Jersey. I, uh, just, you know, talk to Harry every so often. And move I do, too. He still, right. he still He's has just the a dogs. fine fellow. Harry yeah. was a dog lover. He always had kennels wherever yeah. he lived. And he yeah. said it was, the punishment for the kids was if they did something wrong, they had to go out and sit in the kennel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, you know, uh, I was talking to Johnny Donovan. When he was hired at WABC, he so said they brought him in to show him the studio, and it was about 2 o'clock, and he said he walked in, there's Dan Ingram and Ron Lundy. And he said, he got this feeling, he said there were three people in the room and one of them didn't belong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was probably the engineer. <laughs> that, we had problems with engineers because when I got there, which was about four or five years before Ron, uh, they had a director, a platter turner, and an engineer all in the studio. And you had to figure out when to throw a cue so the record was eventually hit the front of what you were talking about but uh, it was about a two second delay uh -huh. well now let's listen to a cut this is you doing your opening and i guess the engineer was new that day uh -huh. now we'll hear ron laughing in the background but you're trying to do your opening this engineer hasn't quite now heard. the most music on wabc new york wabc go 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 Space sounds here. Can I have a little less on that monitor behind there, please? <laughs> no, not more. Ugh, my mind is boggled. Wait a minute, the earphones are burning out my head. Everything, wait, who is in here? Just, were you, did you put up with the studio in this condition, Ron? Was, I was, didn't do my show here. You didn't do your show in the studio today? No wonder. Was Frank in here or something? It's, it's always that way when Frank is in here. There, there are pieces of chicken bones on the floor. And, and some, some little symbols that look like distal things and stuff. <laughs> and the little fire in the corner that he dances around in the nude right before he goes on the air. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess, you know. Frank has his own way of getting up for the show. Me, I just go around the corner. <laughs> that was George Michael. Okay, let's do it. Wow, 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 wow. Right, it's a couple o'clock in the Ingram thing. A couple o'clock on your thing, too, my dear. The time is running out. Right. <laughs> Nothing phased you. And it usually did. <laughs> just the best. I was always out of phase. You're just the best, Dan. Well, thank you, Ron. You're the best, too. Well, it was great to have you, Ron Lundy, have you call in. Uh, now, is, is this the first time in how many years that you two have spoken together on the air? Oh, on, on the air? Yeah. Oh, I don't think we ever have since that one air check he played. Really? A CBS FM? You never... Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe well, we, we... Oh, yeah, we did that, too. CBS yeah. FM, yeah. 
But uh, oh, oh, and then yeah, you left me such, uh, alone in New York. You left me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we played the clip before. You were signing off the station 1982, and you two said, "That's it. We'll never be back here." And here you are, both back here. Yeah, years I'm years. loving it. That shows the power of Mark Simone. <laughs> Took 25 years. <laughs> never, never have this guy angry at you. <laughs> well, Ron Lundy, thanks for checking in with us. Always great to hear from you. Uh, is he there? Did we lose him? Ron? No, I, think we I think we lost him. Did I sound, finally say something that offended him? <laughs> Let's take a quick break. Saturday Night Old is brought to you by Six Flags Great Adventure and New York Community Bank. Who else could pull this off? Saturday Night Oldies from 77 WABC. Boy, is there anything better than being at the ballpark? Hot dogs, green grass, great baseball. Yeah, and rooting for our favorite New York team. Think we could bank on a Subway Series this year? Gee, I don't know, but I do know one thing you can bank on. What's that? The great rate 15-month CD from New York Community Bank, earning 5.15% APY. Wow, 5.15% APY for 15 months? Guaranteed? Now that's a sure thing. The NYCB Family of Banks is comprised of New York Community Bank Division, Queens County Savings Bank, Roslyn Savings Bank, Richmond County Savings Bank, Roosevelt Savings Bank, CFS Bank, First Savings Bank of New Jersey, and Ironbound Bank, as well as New York Commercial Bank and its Atlantic Bank Division. Just stop in at any one of the more than 160 convenient locations throughout New York and New Jersey and take advantage of this great rate CD. For more information, check them out on the web at nycbfamily.com or call 718-448-7272. New York Community Bank and New York Commercial Bank are members FDIC. Annual percentage yield effective May 21st, 2007. And is subject to change without notice. Rates remain fixed until mature. Minimum balance to open this 15-month CD and obtain APY is $500. Penalty for early withdrawal may apply. Nice start. Time out. Basketball's fun, but I need a cold drink. My mom's making Ritz chocolate Ovaltine. Ovaltine? Let's go. I guess the kids will be home soon. Let's make Ritz chocolate Ovaltine. Come on. Sarah's mom's making Ritz chocolate Ovaltine. All right. My kids love Ovaltine's rich chocolate taste. And I love all those vitamins and minerals that you won't find in Nesquik powder. Mom, who's that? Who wants Ovaltine? We, we do. do. You better make more. More, more Ovaltine, Ovaltine, please. Fifteen new teams. One reigning champion. One trophy. One winner. Yeah. Get ready for the ultimate pop culture competition as these teams compete for $250,000 in the biggest Team Trivia Challenge Black Mamba So Baby Got Back ever. <laughs> VH1 and Entertainment Weekly is the 2007 World Series of Pop Culture presented by Altel Wireless. Tonight at 9, 8 Central, only on VH1. This time is war. Next we have on offer one gallon of gasoline. Super unleaded with 5% ethanol. Opening bids start at $3.36. Do I have $3.36? $3.36 to the man in the Ascot. Do I have $3.70? The price of gas keeps going up. But right now, the cost of a new Hyundai is going down. It's your Hyundai dealer's 3 over 30 sales event, where you'll find incredible deals on three crates and ads. The Sonata, the Elantra, and the Accent. Each gets over 30 miles per gallon. And each is built with award-winning quality backed by America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. So save big on a Hyundai that saves you money at the pump. Get to the 3 over 30 sales event going on right now at your Hyundai dealer. 388, sold to the woman in the semi. Hurry to your local Hyundai dealer today for the best deals on three fuel-efficient sedans. See dealer for limited warranty details. 2007 EPA fuel economy estimates for manual transmission 2007 Elantra 36, automatic transmission 2007 X of 37, and automatic transmission 2007 Sonata 33, highway MPG. Actual mileage may vary. Safety costs always be warned. Around here, we still play the hit. Saturday Night Oldies and weekday mornings with Curtis and Kuby on 77 WABC. Standing from WABC. WABC music time, a couple minutes before 7. Dan Ingram is... We have to... that, that bell, every time I hear it, I sound like... <laughs> well, in the next hour, hopefully we'll get you to uh, maybe talk out of the record or into the record. Uh, oh, yeah. You got... Um, oh, I'll tell you off mic what it is, so I won't spoil it on the air. Oh, okay, because it's like... I know, it's like asking Babe Ruth to hand it in the bat. Say, here, hit a few for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm... Well, I've, I've handed in a few bats in my time. Oh, uh, I've made a few. <laughs> so the phones are going crazy. Uh, we'll take some calls in the next hour. You'll have a chance to talk to Dan Ingram. Uh, also, let's see the message board. 
you can go there, musicradio77.com. There's a link to the message board. Uh, we'll, we'll show you these thousands of people are writing uh, messages to you here. Haven't they got anything better to do? Good guy. I mean, you know, this was 50 years ago, 70 years ago, or something like that. But there's nothing better than this. Uh, is, to quote Peggy Lee, is that all there is? You know, you know who had made that record before Peggy Lee? We got about 15 seconds, too. Dan Daniel. Dan Daniel recorded Dan that? Daniel recorded, is that all there is, about six months before Peggy Lee ever heard it. She heard it, his record, fell in love with it, said, I want that song, and she made a couple of million seller out of it. You're kidding. Oh, more of this in news, a moment. Opinion. Passion. This Action. is the most listened to news talk radio station in the nation. From ABC News, I'm Chuck Severson. The biggest payout in the Roman Catholic Church's priest sex abuse scandal is expected in Los Angeles, where ABC's Alex Stone is. Chuck, details of the settlement are still being ironed out, but it's expected the L.A. Archdiocese will announce a $600 million settlement on Monday, the same day the first of more than 500 cases involving priest abuse in the L.A. Church was scheduled to go to trial. As part of the settlement, the Archdiocese may also have to release some documents it's unclear at this point how the church will pay the settlement. Each accuser would get around $1.2 million. Chuck. Firefighters are trying to contain about a dozen lightning-caused wildfires in Washington State hours before another thunderstorm is supposed to happen. Close to 2,700 lightning strikes were reported in Washington State and Oregon yesterday to today, sparking 212 fires. Most have been quickly contained. When a homeowner used metal grinding equipment on a metal water pipe, it sparked a fire now covering more than 16,000 acres in California's Los Padres National Forest. That according to the Fire Info Center spokesman Joe Vela. The fire started in private land, and it burned into the Los Padres National Forest and subsequently into the San Rafael Wilderness. The fire is only 37% contained. It could threaten a small village if it jumps a river. Another video of Osama bin Laden has appeared on jihadist websites. It's not known how old it is, and it's appeared with very little fanfare. <laughs> bin Laden himself looks older, speaking about martyrdom to an unseen audience in a mountainous setting. Bin Laden is suspected of using videos like this to send coded messages. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki says American forces can leave any time they want because his military and police can provide security. Top U.S. generals say otherwise. One of Maliki's top aides accuses the U.S. of violating human rights and of treating his country like an American lab experiment. At the private funeral in Austin, Texas, for Lady Bird Johnson, former First Ladies and Ex-Presidents, and a backdrop of wildflowers. You're listening to ABC News. <laughs> 